up, guys? Welcome back. Let's really dive in and look what happened at Penn State's offense against Maryland and where things are going wrong and what they need to do to fix them. Remember, we're doing these all season, so make sure that you guys hit like, subscribe. If you have any comments, we'd love feedback. Looking forward to it. Let's roll. Let's dive into what happened and what's happening with the Penn State offense and why it seems like nothing is clicking. It's a chemistry thing. It's a route concept thing. I know people are going to talk about Soraka. Let me tell you something. The play calls were good. They were there. You had drop balls. You had bad decisions by the quarterback. You had bad O-line play. It's hard to call plays when kids aren't executing. So the first play, real simple, guys. You have a wing set with the twins up top. All right, what you're going to get right here is you're going to get a simple RPO. You're going to get an inside zone RPO, okay? Inside of the zone RPO, same side zone. You're going to get a crawfish by Parker Washington here, and you're going to get a slant. This is a, this is a man beater. This crawfish should take this guy completely out of the play, and this guy has to win this slant. Quarterback sees it. He knows that there's more guys in the box than they can block. You have seven guys in the box right now. You have an eighth defender back here playing deep safety who can make the run alley fit. You have six linemen right now. So you have seven run fitters. You have six O linemen. Somebody's unblocked. You're outnumbered. So he knows I'm going to throw this ball, especially against man. Nice delivery. Great ball. He gets off, he gets off man. And he drops the ball. That is a catch that you have to make at that level, no matter who you are. All right. So now you've got, again, four, five, six. Okay. You have six guys here. Now, the problem is the way this is built, you have seventh guy right here. You have this linebacker who's lined up right here, and he's the extra fitter. What they see is they see zone read. And a very simple way to stop zone read, running back is going to go this way. Quarterback is going to read the in man line of scrimmage, and that's the extra fit guy. The problem is they're going to do what a lot of people call the gap exchange. They're going to run down the field, okay, and you're going to get zone blocking, and you're going to leave this guy in block, and you're going to read him. He's going to squeeze. But this guy hanging down here is what they call a gap exchange player. They're going to get the quarterback to pull, so they have an extra run fitter right here. Watch. Quarterback reads in man line of scrimmage. In man squeezes. He pulls. Well, the problem with pulling, they have an extra run fitter they can't account for. They brought one extra to the box. Now, Penn State had an answer later on where they started flip-flopping the running back, but by then it was too late. Okay, so here you go. We're in man coverage. You have five, five people in the box, and you're in man. You have one free safety. Look at the pressure we're getting up front. Again, if it's man, you know they're running man knowing that they can get pressure on this offensive line. This is a simple whiff by your left guard. He oversets, ducks his head, gives the inside hand. He gets beat inside. But the problem is they beat man here. You have a crossing route by number five. It's so frustrating to watch because he had two things wide open. Most of the time, you're looking to pick this and run this wheel. They don't do it. They're trying to hit the crossers. You have him wide open. You have a broken down, you have a broken down protection. Quarterback pulls it, Cliver pulls it. Now, the only escape he has is either throw that ball or tuck and run. When you get man, you got a lot of run lanes for the quarterback if you get a pass rush. This is the extra safety, just run fitting. All right, now, again, ball in the 50, second down and six. Again, count the guys. I have six blockers. They have five, six, seven. Notice the overhang guy. Notice the extra man down. Now I want you to see this. Now you're going to get what they call a power toss. They're going to read the DN on power toss. Normally, if this kid comes up the field, quarterback pulls and runs. If that guy, if this guy right here crashes, he just pitches it, and you've got gap numbers. Now, here's the problem. They run a great play action off of this. You get Firemuth, who gives you a nice, he gives you a nice outside release. He gets inside on the scene. Now you have a problem up front, but we're going to talk about the seam route first. Number one, he hits the seam is wide open. You have a six, seven tight end. How do you overthrow him by seven feet? That's a struggle. And this is what they got to fix. This is just a chemistry thing. And right now it feels like there's no chemistry in this football team. The other issue you have is you have miscommunications up front. This offensive tackle has to call has to what they call a zone float wheel, or he has to wheel this. He has to take anything from the B-gap and wheel out. He has to take care of this guy because the center has an extra player. 
You have a free running defensive end coming at the quarterback. It gets in his window. Remember we talked about on all the previous ones, he never gets over the because he can't step into his throw. His weight never transitions over. And now you've got a problem. He throws off his back foot. He sails the ball. We talked about that in week one against Indiana. He cannot throw the ball off his back foot. He's not accurate enough to not set his feet. This is the problem. Again, you have five guys in the box. You are in a true empty look. They haven't changed anything, guys. It is still man cover one. There is a safety outside the screen right here because Penn State loves to run the slot fades. Well, that takes it away. Safety can read the eyes of the quarterback, and you're going to get a slot fade by one of these guys on the inside. They took that away from them. They said, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to beat us in man old-fashioned way. The other issue is in pass protection. You have five guys rushing. You have five guys protecting. Again, now we're creating one-on-ones. And right now, Penn State is not doing a very good job with one-on-ones. I want you to watch the twist and stunt they get right here. This is a true pick route by the defense attack for the linebacker to get around. You have, you have guys just all over the place. It's third and six. It's empty. Okay? They're in cover one. Look, there is nothing open. There is nothing open. And the only thing he has right here is he has an in-breaking route with an outselling break. He's going to break inside. And this route probably has a chance to be open. But the problem is, one, he stops at the top of his route. Two, quarterback has no time to throw the ball, and he's too busy looking at the line. Watch. Watch him bail. One, two, three. His eyes went down right now and saw this. That's the only thing he's worried about right now. You can tell he is not comfortable in the pocket, and this is causing problems with Penn State. There is absolutely no chemistry. 